Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Pokemon Go At. Today we are here in Baltimore City and we are on our way to the Inner Harbor, which is probably my favorite spot to catch Pokemon. Uh, there's lots of water types here. You can find pretty much every water line in the game except maybe the ice types. I don't remember if I found a seal or shelter here, but I know I haven't found a Lapras. Maybe today will be the day. Uh, you can also find a ton of Magikarp, the occasional Dratini, so it's a great place if you're looking for a Gyarados or a Dragonite. Uh, and it's about 100 degrees out today, so we might actually spend a couple hours indoors. We wait for the sun to set and things to cool off a bit. And it's also, I believe, the last day of the final Otakon here in Baltimore. So, uh, probably gonna see a lot of people and a lot of cosplayers and hopefully a lot of cool Pokemon as well. Alright, so we have already found our first Dratini of the day. That was a great way to start. Let's click on him there. And I'm gonna go over to the water so we can turn on AR mode and actually catch the Dratini here in the water. Alright, there he is. Now the tricky part is going to be trying to catch this guy one-handed. Since I'm holding the camera with the other hand, that's the Columbus Center you can see over there. Actually, let me see if I can actually get him to be in the water, because that would be pretty awesome. Alright, there we go. Uh, I'm going to use a raspberry, and I'm actually going to use Ultra Balls, even though I don't have too many, just because uh, I really want to catch this guy. We're going to evolve another Dragonite today. And if he has the move we want, then we're going to power him up. So I'm going to need those candies. So let me actually put the camera down beside me here. All right, this should be a pretty good view. And let's see if we can catch ourselves this routine here. All right, we hit him. And we got him. All right, that's a great way to start the day. Uh, I'd say on average here, you get a Dratini about once every half an hour or so. There was one day I was here for like five hours and only got five Dratini. And there was another day I was sitting in front of some lures and four Dratini spawned in a row, which is pretty awesome. But uh, it definitely tends to vary. Oh, and we have an egg hatching. All right, I don't think this is a 10K. I do have one more 10K egg left. But I don't think it's going to hatch yet. Growlithe, okay, we can use some Growlithe candy, I guess. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, so we have officially arrived at the Inner Harbor. This is the, uh, the old power plant, which is now a Barnes & Noble bookstore, the Hard Rock Cafe, and you can actually hear one of their bands performing in the background, uh, and Philip's Seafood, and there's some other little shops down there, too. Uh, and you can see on the map there that there are four Pokestops, all lured. And I'd say at any given time, you have between at least two or three Pokestops, sometimes even five, or even the ones kind of around it'll be lured. Uh, there's also some good ones down that way over that way but we'll head down there in a bit um, so there actually is another Dratini here somewhere around and Dratini always spawn by the water which limits the number of locations he could be at so we're gonna walk around see if uh, anything good spawn any of these lures and also try to find that Dratini but yeah Philip's Seafood has been a seafood restaurant here in Baltimore for years and years apparently um, but they moved locations fairly recently, I think, in the last 10 years. They used to be at one of the pavilions over in the Inner Harbor. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay over all the music and all the noise. But like I said, there are lots of people here, especially because of Otakon. You can see some Magikarp flopping around there. I'm not going to bother with them because I'll catch a bunch of Magikarp off screen. And we do have some more Gyarados evolutions to do later on as well. National Aquarium over there. Two of the three buildings at least. The other one is on this pier. There's the Palawag and Ekans on our radar. Palawags are nice, because Palawag is a great Pokemon, plus uh, 
if you already have one, you can just evolve them for the XP. But right now we have our eyes set on only one Pokemon, and that is Dratini. All right, he's still within the race, and they're around male as well. All right, this is a, a good place uh, to start. So I'm gonna walk just a little bit further down this pier here. That's one of the uh, three aquarium buildings right next to us. Because sometimes Dratini spawns over here, and if uh, nothing pops up in a couple seconds, I'm gonna do a U-turn and cross over towards the next pier over. We are currently at, what is this, Pier 4? Yeah, we're on Pier 4. There are six piers in total. You can see, you can't see through the building on the camera, but you can see it on the map there. That's Pier 5 and 6. We'll head over there in a little while. Um, pier 6 is the location of the Pier 6 Pavilion, obviously, where they have a lot of concerts. It's really cool because you can sit on Pier 5 and actually get uh, listen to the concerts for free. But we are going to head over this bridge now and see if Tratini is over on Pier 3. Alright, so I'm walking across this bridge here and we had an egg hatch. Still not the 10k egg yet, but let's see what we get. I'm a little worried about that Tratini spawn timer. Oh, Pikachu, that's cool. This is only my second Pikachu and the first one is also from an egg. So that's pretty awesome. We definitely use those candies. This is the uh, Chesapeake here. One of the old ships they have parked in the area. There's four of them actually, and you can take tours. And there's Tratini, sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and click on him just so we don't miss him. And there's actually little dragon boats around here, so it's appropriate that we would find dragon Pokemon. All right, again, I'm gonna put my camera down just so I can use both hands for this guy. And he's 707 CP, not bad at all. Raspberry. A little high, but still hit him. Two shakes, two shakes, three shakes. All right, there we go. All right, well, now that there's no more Dratini on our map, we can actually sightsee a bit. And I wish this camera could zoom out further than it does. Hey, it's the sun again, reflecting off the building. But this is the main entrance to the aquarium here. Used to come here a bunch when I was really little. I haven't been in there in years, but uh, I remember having a good time. So if you live around here and have kids, be sure to bring them here at some point. Uh, they have dolphins, they have jellyfish, sharks, all kinds of cool stuff. And I see that Magikarp's still down there. There's also a gym. The one gym in the area is the end of that pier down there. We might go take that later, but uh, it, as you can see, it's being attacked right now. It gets attacked fairly frequently because this is such a public area. So if we take it, we might as well just cash in right away because it's not going to stay captured for long. As you can tell, there's tons of focus shots everywhere. That statue there is one. We're going to flip him. And we're going to walk around here towards the World Trade Center, the Baltimore World Trade Center, which, fun fact, is not the highest building in Baltimore, but it is the highest regular pentagonal building in the world. There's one higher pentagon-shaped building in Texas somewhere. There's the cat in the hat there. But it's not a regular pentagon, whereas this one is. So, fun fact, normally that's open, that gate there, and you can just walk right on through along the waterfront. You can see, I'll go out here so you can see some, uh, some ducks and dragon boats and all. Lots of ducks. So it makes sense there's lots of side ducks here, because there are lots of real ducks too. Sometimes you can even see the little duckies, but I just see adults today. And that there, I believe, is actually the remains of Pier 2 of the Inner Harbor, because right now there's a Pier 1, Pier 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's no Pier 2, but if Pier 2 existed, it would be right there at the base of the tower. And uh, being curious about this, I actually Googled it and did some online research and found an old drawing that apparently there was a Pier 2. And I even found the name of the company that used to have their headquarters there. So it existed at one point. I'm guessing it got like destroyed in a storm or just... I don't know what happened, but uh, at some point they decided to let it go to waste and uh, build the World Trade Center there instead. So this here is the 9-11 uh, memorial for Baltimore and for Maryland. Um, you can see memorials here to the Pentagon, to Flight 93, and then of course behind us there we have a piece of uh, the World Trade Center in New York. Since this is the Baltimore World Trade Center, it makes sense the memorial will be here. A lot of people from Maryland died in the attack, so their names are engraved here. In the background there, you can see the power plant. The hard rock guitar had its cap. All right, and I see another Dratini on our radar, so you guys must be good luck, because they normally do not spawn this quickly. This is actually really awesome. 
it would be great if we could evolve two Dragonites today, or have a chance to evolve two Dragonites if uh, the first one doesn't have Dragon Breath, which I really hope it does. But that'll require a lot of candies. I think I'm at like 190 or something. So we'd have about 60 candies to go if we wanted to get two shots at it today. I'm not going to catch these guys, but I will flip the uh, okay, an egg. Sweet. Makes sense since we just lost an egg. Alright, and Dratini has fallen off the radar, so we'll head down that way a little later on. But for now, I'm going to double back and try to find this guy again, and I will see you guys when we do. Alright, so no Dratini yet, although we are hot on this trail. But to get an egg that's hatching, I don't know if this is 10k, it could be... Uh, no, just a Paris. Alright, so... Third 10k should be hatching in another kilometer, so... But I believe I've triangulated Dratini... Oh, another egg, maybe this is it. Again, sorry about the sun, we're ever walking towards it. Nope, bell sprout, that's okay, because I don't have a Victor Bell yet. So I can use his candies. We're getting close. All right. So I think I, I've been down there. Obviously, you guys saw that. Went down that way, and uh, he fell off the map, and went over that way, and he fell off the map. So he's got to be right back kind of where we started today's journey. And one of these, the ends of one of these little canals over here. So that's our destination. There's also a slow bro in the area, which is pretty cool. Um, if he has high CP, I'll definitely catch him as an extra gym defender. But my main priority right now is definitely that Tratini. All right, so we finally found the Tratini. Turns out he was just on the other side of this little canal here. Um, there's a lot of trash in today. I'm not really sure why. Usually it's a lot cleaner than this. I actually have a really cool video of, uh, of this little canal thing during a, uh, a storm. I'll probably put that up in a second. But... Yeah, I, I went ahead and engaged it right away because I knew it was probably going to police soon. It's just on the camera again. And we are going to try to catch ourselves our fourth Dratini of the day. I did find Dratini here once before a while ago and at Dragonair actually on Friday. Pretty good throw. As always, it's hard to get a, uh, a great or excellent throw on a Dratini. But as long as we're hitting him, I'll take it. All right, and another first throw catch. That's pretty awesome. 200 can up, oh, and another egg hatching. Let's see if this one's 10K. If so, I'm hoping for a Snorlax. It was a 10K, and it was a pincer. Well, that's disappointing. So I already have like four pincers, and I've uh, turned many more into candy, but oh well, it is what it is. Alright, so we have our next Rotini right here in front of the World Trade Center, as you can see. So we have our typical strategy of raspberries and ultra balls. You see we're on the edge of the water there. There we go. Alright, he's kind of close to the camera by the looks of it. Nope, a little, little too weak. There we go. Here, cap on me. One shake, two shake, and there we go. Another successful Dratini capture. Maybe we'll get a 250 today. So that would be awesome because it would mean we can either power up the first one or try for a second. But if we try for two and they both have steel wing, there's still another Dratini around here. So I'm going to keep looking and uh, I'll see you guys when I find them. All right, so the Dratini despawned before I could find it, and uh, it turns out the war taxi closes early today because of an all-staff event. So naturally, the one day I choose to uh, record here is the day the water taxi shut down. But um, yeah, maybe I'll come back in uh, another day and show you guys the water taxi. It's just a taxi that goes across the water, essentially a boat that takes you around the harbor to different stops, which is really convenient, and which, funnily enough, seems like something that uh, you would actually find in a, a Pokemon game. But um, I do want to show you guys over by... Um, uh, what's that called over there? I'm blanking at the moment. Federal Hill. Over by Federal Hill and the Rusty Scupper and kind of walk all the way around. But I'm going to wait another hour maybe so the sun is set and it will maybe be a little cooler. And uh, since I can't take the uh, water taxi over there to start, I'm going to have to walk both ways. So I want to make sure it's a little cool before I start that trek. But I do want to show you guys the entire harbor. So I am planning to do that still. And uh, for now though, as you can tell, we have an egg about to hatch. I think this is a 5k, so we're hoping for Execute or uh, Porygon would be great because I don't have a Porygon yet. Alright, I'll take a Ponyta. I don't have a Rabidash, and in fact I don't think I have very many candies. Yep, 22. So, 
Yeah, I only had ever called one ponytail before this one, so that's pretty cool. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna chill. Yeah, I'll probably walk back to the Hard Rock, chill there for a bit. See, some of the lures are dying down, but that's just temporary. They'll start up again. And uh, I'll let you guys know if I find anything good. Otherwise, I will see you when the sun goes down, and we will walk around the Inner Harbor. All right, so while I normally wouldn't record the uh, capture of a slowpoke, since there's tons of them around here, this one is CP864, which is actually pretty awesome. So I think it's the highest slowpoke I've seen in the wild, and if I catch him, he's definitely gonna be a slow bro probably this episode. I'm gonna try to save my ultra balls for like Tratini and stuff I really want though. So let's see if we can get this guy with a great ball. Luckily, it's a bit easier to catch them than it is a Tratini. Great throw, great ball. I think our odds are pretty good here. And there we go, we have ourselves an 864 slope. That is going to be an awesome slow bro. I bet it'll break at least 1800. Hopefully it knows some good moves. I did pop a lucky egg since I'm gonna be walking around and farming a lot now. Uh, it is weird that for the longest time, Magikarp Psyduck and Tentacool were the three most common Pokemon by far here. And then one day it randomly changed and uh, Slowpoke became as common as Tentacool used to be and Tentacool became as uncommon as Slowpoke used to be. So I don't mind because I, I actually like uh, Slowpoke better than Tentacool. But uh, I don't know if that's something that happened with all the water tables. So if you guys have water splashing or you that did the same thing, let me know in the comments because I haven't really seen anybody talk about it yet. Anyway, see you in a bit as our hunt continues. All right guys, we have made it to the Rusty Scupper on the other side of the harbor, as you can see. We are now across from where we were before. That's Fell's Point over there. Uh, I've been there once. There were some good Pokemon there, but they were a lot more spread out. So I might go back down there in a different episode. We'll see. Um, so over there is the Seven Knoll Lighthouse. You can see it has a lure going right now. And we will make our way over there at some point. That'll be probably the end of our, of our tour. Uh, the Columbus Center, we were over there before. And of course, the aquarium and uh, Pier 4, which is our typical home hunting spot. Uh, there's a beautiful sunset right now, which is why I really wanted to record this at this time. And there's some, a boat in the way, a really cool boat actually. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start walking. A lot of good stuff around this lure, or a lot of stuff around this lure. I don't know about good stuff, but you can catch magic carps and Psyducks and Zubats anytime. So, sunsets like this, however, a little more rare. Yeah, this is one of the many marinas around the Inner Harbor. So if you're uh, rich and famous, you can buy one of these guys. Although apparently you can buy some pretty nice boats for less than I thought they would be. But of course the nicer ones, like that guy over there, those are going to cost you a couple million dollars. That's the Science Center over that way. We're going we're gonna to head down there. It's a gym. You can see the gym down there with Gyarados guarding it. But uh, that gym is very frequently under attack. So it's it's really not worth taking even more so than the gym over by the aquarium. We'll probably grab that one later just because I've always wanted to fight it but it's really not worth the trouble. But uh, just, you know, for lulls, might as well fight it. And uh, since I haven't had a chance to go to any gyms today, might as well cash it in for just a one gym bonus. Um, so yeah, over there is Federal Hill Park. And I'm sure that has some historical significance, although I'm not really sure what it is. You'll have to Google Federal Hill, I guess. You can take a water taxi all the way down to Fort McHenry, which I haven't been to since the game started. In fact, I haven't been to in about 10 years, but uh, one day I might like to go down there again and see what Pokemon I can find. There is a Snorlax on our map. That is awesome. All right. Um, thing is, though, it could be anywhere within this radius, probably up at the park. I'm going to backtrack a second. I've seen wild Snorlaxes on my radar, but not since they kind of half fixed it. That's only a magic harp. So it would be really cool to see one and to get three more candy, or four more candy if I trade them in. Depends what CP is. So our tour, our sunset tour, might have to take a little hiatus here, or hiatus here, while I try to find this Norlax. All right, so he is not actually going away, which means he probably just spawned. So it's 7.32, we have 15 minutes. Um, oh, okay. Let's, I'm going to start walking now. That way it's kind of at a diagonal, so it might not be helpful to me. I'm going to walk directly this way. And the water helps, because he's not in the water, obviously. I don't think he spawns in one of those marina piers. So I'm going to start walking here, and I'm going to keep walking until he falls off the radar. Because that will give us one boundary of our circle. And I guess I'll still record for a little bit, because uh, I do want to show off this sunset. It's apparently some kind of volleyball tournament or something going on over there. I remember this uh, used to be an ice rink, or maybe it still has an ice rink during the winter. 
but obviously it's in the middle of August right now, so no ice rink there today. Yeah, this was not a Pokemon I expected to see here. I've, no, I've seen these, but I have not seen them here. And uh, I've never actually encountered a wild Snorlax. All three of my Snorlax came from eggs. And they were all pretty early on, too. So I haven't caught one in a while, so uh, Newton, my Snorlax, has not had any candy in a while. He's probably really hungry right now. Especially because those guys eat a lot. The Magikarp keeps making me think it's a Snorlax, but it's not. Not by a long shot. Oh, we got an egg hatching, so that's pretty cool. I think it's a 5k, so still hoping for that. Oh my god, another Psyduck. Seriously. I don't think there's any merit to that whole theory about eggs being based on where you uh, get them from. Sometimes it seems like it, because one day I got like a ton of Staryu eggs when I hung out here. But, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really keep track of where I get my eggs enough to really determine that. Some people said that the, um, the tracker still works like it used to, where the closest Pokemon is the one on the left, but... That definitely isn't always the case. I don't know if it's supposed to be the case, but my guess is no, because I've definitely seen the uh, Pokemon at the end of the radar appear right next to me. <laughs> and there he is. We have a Snorlax. All right, this is awesome. My first wild Snorlax. I'm going to come up here to this little 1801. That's the, uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's, that's the highest CP wild Pokemon I've found. So I'm going to sit on this little wall here and put the camera down. You guys can watch the volleyball tournament as I catch this dude. All right, let me turn on AR here. I probably shouldn't though. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we're gonna go for the Ultra Balls, definitely. He's gotta be a great attacker and the three candies will be really nice. But I'm sure he's gonna be a pain to catch. All right, he's not like red red, he's kind of an orange red. All right, not quite in the circle, but it was pretty small. I also don't know what his flea rate is. Hopefully low, because that would make sense. Oh, two shakes, okay. I would have been really excited if we got him on the first try. I'm a little surprised, too. Oh, I waited oh, way too long. Okay, I'm kind of glad I didn't hit him, because that probably wouldn't have caught him anyway. And might have caused him to flee. Oh, an excellent hit. There we go, okay. Excellent curveball, raspberry, ultra ball. Everything is going right now. And there we go. First wild Snorlax caught. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Let's see what moves he knows. Hopefully, okay, look at Earthquake. Not the best moves, but, uh, you know, I'll take it. I'm not sure if that's his, no, I think Zen Headbutt and Body Slam. I'm not sure what his best defense moves it is. That's not his best offense or defense, but hey, it's a free Snorlax. I'll take it. And while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, use those candies. Give some more CP to Newton here. All right, 1947, not bad, not bad. I'll have to think of a good name for this guy. All right, so our trek around the Inner Harbor continues. You can see we're across from the World Trade Center now. They have a crane there, which is cool. I don't, I mean, this isn't much of a port anymore. They don't like ship things to the Inner Harbor. I know they, they have plenty of other harbors around here. And in fact, I think the Inner Harbor was, wasn't even that big of a shipping port back in the day because uh, it's relatively shallow waters but then again I know those piers were all used for some kind of shipping so I don't know but um yeah there's a merry around there that's been there forever I remember when I was little and used to come here we used to go on that my uh, grandmother would take my cousins and I here all the time when we stayed with her during the summer and uh, we'd get either a summer pass to the science center which you can see ahead of us or the aquarium or one time to the Columbus Center when it was some kind of museum but um, I think we'd usually alternate year to year science center aquarium we come out here once every week or every other week, and uh, it's always a good time. So there's a lot of nostalgia for me walking around this place because I haven't been here too frequently since then. Maybe once a year, once every other year, something like that. One thing that's cool if you walk around the harbor here is uh, you can pretty easily get that bonus. If you get 10 unique Pokestops in a row, you get double XP from it and a lot more items. So that's kind of nice if you want to take this uh, this nice trek here like I'm doing.
All right, so we are now most of the way back around the harbor. You can see science centers over there. And way over there is the Rusty Scupper where we started. So it looks like a long walk, but it's really not that bad. And let me zoom back out again. All right, so over here we have the Light Street Pavilion. This is one of the uh, first two pavilions when they started making the Inner Harbor into the tourist destination that it has now become. And apparently it's been used as like a model for other cities, which is, which is really awesome. Um, so they have a Bubba Gump here. Are you fans of Forrest Gump? They have a Ripley's Believe It or Not, which is really cool. There's a Chick-fil-A, I think, in there. A um, couple like clothing stores. And public bathrooms, which are sometimes closed. But that is awesome because you can't find too many public bathrooms these days. Over there, you can see the U.S. Constel Constellation or Constitution? Constellation. Yeah, I can see it on the back of the boat. Um, and the Constellation is, I remember reading about this on Wikipedia, I believe it is like the last ship that was active in War of 1812, I want to say? I don't know. I might have to look that up and either uh, dub this over or provide a link or something. But yeah, it's, it's an important historic ship for some reason I no longer recall. I do believe it's the last of its kind, though, so that's pretty cool. And it's one of the four ships here that uh, you can actually tour, uh, along with the Chesapeake, which is the little tow ship we saw earlier. The, um, uh, I don't remember their names anymore. There's a um, submarine, which was the last submarine to sink a German U-boat in World War II. And the Coast Guard ship, which is over by the Columbus Center. And you can buy passes to all four of them if you're planning to make a day of it. Over here they have a nice little amphitheater area. Sometimes you'll see like street performers or local bands set up and perform there for free, which is pretty cool. You can see jugglers and mimes and all kinds of stuff. You won't see Mr. Mimes here because it's America, but uh, you will see real mimes. And then over here you have the other pavilion, which is the, the uh, Pratt Street Pavilion. And this is the one I spend more time at, honestly, because it's closer to where I usually hang. Uh, it has two bathrooms, both of which were closed on Friday, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, it's got like a pub, some restaurants, a cheesecake factory, Five Guys Burger and Fries, an ice cream store. It's Sugar, which I guess is a candy shop, obviously. Haven't really been in there. Um, but yeah, lots of cool stuff. And there's a better view of the Constellation. Almost too good of a view. I really wish this camera could zoom out more. You can see the moon up there, too. And now we're back in the area again where uh, all those doors are. So that's normally where you'd buy tickets to the ships and to the water taxi, but as I said, the water taxi closed early today. All right, so now we are heading back towards the power plant again. And now that the sun is down, you can actually probably get a better view of it. There's the Chesapeake, as I was talking about, and the uh, submarine. The Coast Guard ship is the USS Taney. I remember the name of that, but I don't remember the name of the submarine. Probably actually on the focus stop. It is the Torsk. There you go. It's got like the shark tonight. We'll head down there and I'll, I'll show you guys a closer view of that. We're not going to go on board, obviously, because I think it's actually closed for the day. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I really want to go inside a metal submarine with this kind of heat anyway. It's probably not super comfy. Actually, you know what? While we're heading down here, you guys want to take on that gym? Uh, somebody already is, but we'll give them a hand, I guess. Unless it's already been taken for the blue team by the time we get there. Fully possible. So yeah, here's the aquarium. Actually, let me go up to... I think it's already closed for the day. Yeah, it's already closed for the day. But you can see in there, look at the glass. A waterfall going. It's a really cool aquarium. Haven't been in there in years either, but it's definitely worth it. They have a, a big, like, giant tropical room at the top. And uh, there's t tons of stuff to see in there. All right, so... Here's the Torsk. Let me look at the Poké stop again, see if they have any more info. There we go. World War II submarine with over 10,000 recorded dives is buried at Pier 3, and that's where we are right now. Sometimes this guy will be lured up too. I'm not really sure why. If there's somebody who works the aquarium who likes to lure it up, or maybe somebody who works on the tourist, I don't know. There's a Pidgey. I'm not going to bother with him yet. All right, let's see what's going on with that gym there. It's got a Chansey, a Nidoking, and a Gyarados. None of them are super high CP, and Chansey actually is not that good of a defender, despite the HP it has. It has very low defense and attacks. People always make that mistake. Chansey was a beast in general one battling, but not so much in Pokemon Go. 
So it looks like maybe the Challenger they train it up or hmm. I don't know. Or maybe they just now they're still battling. Alright. And there's the propeller, that's the actual gym. And I actually don't see anybody on their phones. Maybe they're inside the building. Maybe it's a spoofer, I don't know. But yeah, that group over there is not on their phones. And I don't see anybody else around me. So it's probably somebody, I'm going to assume it's somebody inside the aquarium. Alright, so there's our Gyarados watching over the harbor, that's pretty cool. Let's see, was the person helping us in our team? Uh, I don't know. They haven't put anybody in there yet if they were. But yeah, I always wanted to take that gym. We'll see how long it stands. My guess is 10 minutes. We'll see. Could be more, could be less. I've seen Dragonites up there for half an hour, hour before, but that's about the longest I've seen. Now that Snorlax at the Science Center, that guy was like almost 3,000 CP. That's not it. Where's the Science Center? There we go. And of course, it's already been defeated. So as you can tell, no matter how good your Pokemon are, you're not going to hold any of these gyms for any significant period of time. Alright, so this is the view from the end of Pier 3. Pretty nice view of the Inner Harbor. You can hear the band of Hard Rock playing behind us. There's a little sailboat going through. And I'm, yep, our gym is already under attack. Hey, we got backed up by some pretty good Pokemon. Sweet. And ours is still the best, which is really awesome. That's a pretty competent gym right there. Executor, Slowbro, and Gyarados all above 2,000 CP. Still, I don't think it's going to stay up very long. Maybe there's somebody trying to train it? I did see two guys in their phones walk past me, so that could be it. And there's the, uh, the other building of the aquarium. There's a covered walkway there you can take to get over. Alright, this is cool. If you're here on a hot day, this would be the best spot in the world. You can stand right here. And you probably can't hear me over the, the wind, but it's not wind, it's air conditioning pumping straight out of these vents here. So if you're here and it's really hot, come stand here for five minutes, you know, evolve some Pokemon or uh, clear your bag of items or transfer Pokemon, whatever it is you want to do in your downtime. This is the spot to do it. There's no real Pokestops in range here or anything like that. But I mean, you have to choose between a lure and AC. There are some days you'd rather have the AC. Alright, so we are now at the end of Pier 4, which is not a place I come very often. This is the end of uh, that one aquarium building we were just walking towards. Um, there's not really much here except for the actual aquarium Pokestop. Just glitch at the moment. Yeah. But uh, I did want to rock around here just for the great view. Whoa, that was lightning. Alright. Yeah, I, there was a small chance of rain tonight. I wouldn't mind some light rains to cool off, but I don't want like a thunderstorm to catch us here. There was one day I got caught in a thunderstorm here, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty epic. I actually evolved my first Dragonite under the Pier 6 tent, the outside tent, uh, during a thunderstorm. Was really hoping that was gonna make it super epic, and he would know the right moves, but it didn't. There's a, I don't know if that's the same sailboat or a different one. There's a couple boats out there. If that lightning is coming towards us. They should probably probably make port. Although I think the storm clouds are actually heading away from us. So that's good. Nice bright moon up there. Over there is Harbor East in Fells Point. We are going to head a couple more piers over. Now, as you can hear, that's not the music from the Hard Rock. That's actually the music from Pier 6, which is the uh, one of the main Baltimore concert pavilions. So we're going to walk over there. And as I think I might have said earlier, that's a great place for essentially free concerts because you can sit on Pier 5 and basically get a, a pretty good view and uh, a great sound. You can even see here from over here. This is Pier 4 pretty much free. And it's Pokestop, which isn't blurred at the moment. That's really surprising, given the quantity of people I'm sure over there. But I do want to head down that way to see the, uh, the lighthouse and uh, the other cool stuff down there. So over here is a really cool fountain. You can actually put your feet in the water here, which uh, I haven't actually done, but I, one of these days when it's really hot, I really want to just do that to cool off. But there's these dolphin statues. I don't know how well you can see them. They're Pokestop. It's lowered a decent amount of the time. So if you're making the loop up and down these guys here, it's uh, not a bad idea to come all the way down to this guy and stop here just to see what spawns the lure. It's about a three minute path that way and back and forth. So 
by the time you get here, something new will spawn back there. There's the U.S. Taney, the Coast Guard vessel there, the fourth of our four historic ships, and the Columbus Center behind it, which I think used to be a museum, but is now a marine institute of some sort. I think it might be associated with uh, UMBC College. Oh, my bag is full. There's a ponytail around here. That'd be pretty cool. And an ivy store. Both good catches. I'm not going to go my way to find them, but uh, if I run into them, that'd be awesome. And behind that, there's a parking garage, which is really expensive. I think it's $24 on the uh, weekdays for a whole day and $30 flat on the weekends, but it is really convenient. So if you're coming down here for a whole day and you actually plan to uh, make the most of it, then that might not be a bad place to park. All right, here we are at Pier 5, and let's check up on the thunderstorm. I did get a text that uh, apparently there is a severe thunderstorm block for the next 45 minutes, but we appear to be okay on this side of the harbor. I'm glad I walked over from over there, because if anywhere is getting hit, it's going to be them. I do gotta admit though, the time that I got caught in the thunderstorm here was actually one of my best nights here. But that was a lot of fun. I was drenched by the end of it, but it was a lot of fun. There were like a ton of us trainers that huddled up in the Barnes and Noble trying to stay dry and keep cool until the storm passed. And uh, I, I was like one dratini away from a Dragonite, my first Dragonite, and one spawn on, on uh, Pokevision over in front of that pavilion over there. And I ran all the way through the soaking rain, and it wasn't rain toward at that time. But when I got there, it started downpouring, so I got caught in the like the ticket pavilion in front of there, and that's where I evolved my first Dragonite. I think I actually made a video of that, so I might put the footage to that up next to this if I can find it. But as you can see, there is a concert going on, it's definitely some kind of metal band. But you can see our people out here camped out listening to it. Pretty awesome spot. And to our left there is the 7 0 Lighthouse, which uh, is a little lighthouse that used to be, I think, out in the harbor somewhere. Again, I'm not really up in my history, but I think it's really cool they preserve it there and they give tours and stuff during the daytime. It's a really cute little lighthouse. And again, water taxi stop down there, so if you don't feel like walking, then uh, you can always water taxi around. Alright, so this is about the extent of our Inner Harbor tour. Like I said, I may do a Pokemon Go at Fells Point slash Harbor East later on. We'll see. I would like to explore that area a little bit more. There's some gyms and Pokemon stuff. I parked over that way once, so I did explore it a little bit. Caught an execute and some other good things, but uh, nothing that would really warrant spending a whole day there, I don't think. But who knows? Could be totally wrong. We'll see. I definitely saw some Dratini there on Pokevision before. Quite a crowd tonight by the looks of it. There's actually a lot of people over at, uh, I guess it would be Pier 7 if it was a pier, over that way, but that's actually the, the, uh, the main land again, as you can see. That's where that like Mason building is and all that new construction that wasn't here when I used to come as a kid. And this is uh, that one canal between the piers that actually goes all the way back into the city past Port Discovery and uh, up to that tower over there. But yeah, that's basically for the Inner Harbor as far as uh, exploration goes. However, there is still a lot of stuff I want to show you guys. I want to go to the inside of the Barnes & Noble. I'm going to check and see if the World Trade Center observation deck is open, but I'm pretty sure it's not. And uh, at this hour, you might not get the best view anyway. We'll see if the weather holds out. I do see some lightning and the sky is getting pretty dark, so it might be a good idea to hang out at the Barnes & Noble a while. But uh, we have a lot of evolutions to do still, including Executor and Dragonite. So I'm going to, and I need to eat, that's the other thing too, I need to get some food in me. So I'm going to find some good food, uh, and then I'm going to check out the Barnes & Noble, show you guys that, and then we'll do some evolution, and uh, hopefully get something good. Alright guys, so as you can tell, it's getting really windy here, so I'm going to apologize right now if it's hard to hear me. If it's super hard, I'll dub over this, but uh, otherwise I'm going to keep going. So that's real quick uh, pro tip, there's a water fountain over there, there's the Plumbus Center, it's right there. Only water found in the area, hell. So if you need to rehydrate, it's a great place to go. Alright guys, so quick catch up before I catch this ghastly here. So I was walking back over this way and uh, the lightning actually turned into a pretty torrential downpour. So I ducked inside the Chipotle over there. You can see there's still some lightning going, but the rain is mostly let up. And uh, had dinner at Chipotle, so that was good. And uh, way out the rain only lasted about half an hour or so. And now things have uh, mostly cleared up. So, I was walking around and I found this ghastly, so let's take a quick stop. If I sit on this bench, am I going to get soaked? Nah, not really. Alright. So, I'm going to camera on my knee here, and we'll catch ourselves a ghastly. Stay still. Alright, there we go. Let's turn on the AR. There it is. Still saving up for a Gengar, so this will bring me one step closer. 
he's doing that tipping thing. Stay still. It's a pretty small circle, even though I was nowhere near it. One shake, two shakes. There we go. Oh, he got. Okay, that was like a last second escape there. I really thought we had him. All right, let's give it another go. He is at 602 CP, so he's a pretty high level gas leak. This might be the one I level up when I get my Gengar. Ah, uh, he picked me out at the last second. Unfortunately, Gengar are not that great in this game, but they might change him one day, so it'll be good to have one more. Okay, there we go. Got ourselves a Ghastly. The other bit of bad news is that uh, while I was waiting in Chipotle, 9 o'clock came and went, which means Barnes & Noble is now closed. So that's really a shame. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is come back tomorrow and get a little bit of footage of that after work. Uh, unfortunately, the Top of the World Observation Deck closes at 6 o'clock every day, which means I, there's no way I can get all the way up here by then. But um, So we're not going to get any footage of that, unfortunately. But I will show you guys the Barnes & Noble, and I'll splice it in after this little segment. And then what I'm going to do is walk around here for another hour or so, maybe. See if I can catch some more Dratini. I think we still have a ways to go before we could evolve two Dragonites tonight. So it'll probably just be one. We'll see.